ahead and begin to thank him for his glory that is in your life, for his glory that is on your life, for his glory that is being revealed in you. Father, we bless your name. We worship you. We adore you. We extol you and we thank you for your glory that's on us, Lord. For your glory in our lives. We have come to thank you. Come on, thank him like you understand what you're talking about. My life is full of your glory. In the morning, afternoon, and night. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Hey, my life is full of splendor. I'm not ashamed. I'll never be put to shame. My life is full of your glory. Gratitude will open you up to higher altitudes. That the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. I know who I am. I have the glory of God upon my life. For this cause, I can lift up holy hands and appreciate the Lord because my life is full of glory. My story is from glory to glory. My experience is from glory to glory. Christ in me, the hope of my glory. I'll never be behind in life. I'll never be the last in life. I'll never be ashamed in life. The glory of God is seen all around me. My, from the crown of my head to the very sole of my feet, in my wardrobe and in the outside world, the glory of God is covering my life. The Bible said the glory shall fill up the earth as the water covers the seas. I'm full of glory. Hey! I got glory. I got glory. The glory of God is at work in my mind. His dark sights at work in me. Thank you, precious Father. There's none like you. There's none like you, Lord. Praise be your holy name. Jesus. Oh. Let your glory rest. Let your glory wet me all over. Let your glory soak me all over. Even in greater measures, I soak in thy glory. Hey. I soak in your glory, Lord. I bask in it. From within every cell, every tissue, only the glory of God is felt in me. In my words, the glory of God. In my thoughts, the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, you are my glory. Blessed be your name, Father. I worship you. Thank you for making me a partaker of this glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome you in this place, Father. Thank you for the worship and the prayers. And the praises. We're ready to receive words from you. Let it not fall upon hardened hearts. Let it not be repaired. Let it soak into our very spirits. Let every person be changed by your truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can you celebrate Jehovah God? Celebrate the King of Glory. Celebrate Jehovah. Celebrate Adonai. El Elyon. Hey. Celebrate him from your heart. Jehovah. Adonai. 
I bless your holy name. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, don't get tired of worshiping. Tell him I'll spend myself for you if it is you. So long as it's for you, I'm ready to spend all of myself. Manda Yabasha. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tap your neighbor, say, magnify the Lord with me. Say, exalt his holy name. Hallelujah. Let's have our seats gloriously. Like kings, amen. And like queens that we are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is good. Our God is what? Amen. You don't sound like your God is good now. Amen. My God is good. Amen. How great is your God? Amen. It's a question. How great is your God? Amen. 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 Is your God great at all? How great is he? How great is so great? Amen. Is there anything your God can do? Is there any problem he can't fix? What is troubling your heart right now? Do you really think he can't fix it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. I feel like singing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What I have to apply self-control. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please join me to celebrate some very special people. Amen. Um, they are wonderful people. I've not seen their kind before. Amen. Amen. I'm so appreciative to have them. They are great blessings. Praise the Lord. They make leading very simple and easy for me. Praise the Lord. They don't give me stress. They don't give me problem. Hallelujah. They don't make me doubt my calling. Praise the Lord. Because I like it with a standing ovation. Praise the Lord. A very huge standing ovation. Standing ovation means you stand and you begin to clap. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please put your hands together for your wonderful self. Amen. Put your hand together for your wonderful self. Celebrate yourself. Hallelujah. I've not seen your kind. Praise the Lord. You are so wonderful. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful to God for giving me you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're the best church members I could ever ask of. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't have a rival. Amen. You have no competitors. Hallelujah. Amen. The way you're answering is like you don't believe it. May God deliver you. Amen. Please, while you're standing, please join me to celebrate our wonderful men of God, our pastors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I love and appreciate every one of you. You all look so wonderful today. <laughs> Praise Master Jesus. Amen. Let's have our seats. Let's have our seats. Praise the Lord. You know, when I was coming this morning, it was really slippery. I don't know if it's better now. I, was, I came quite early. Is this still slippery? Yes. Amen. Amen. You shall not fall in Jesus' name. Yes. Did any of you fall? Amen. No matter how slippery life gets, amen, I can tell you one thing, you will get to your destination. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't come out of your house and see how slippery it is and go back in. Amen. No. We are not of those folks. We are overcomers. Tap your neighbor and say, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Amen. amen. Today, one of, um, perhaps... 
finished or almost finished, praise the Lord, our series on um, I am valuable, praise the Lord. I am what? Valuable. And that's what God told us at the month. He said, you are more valuable than the sparrows. I'm glad to see several of your faces today. Some faces I've not seen in a while. You look handsome. You look pretty. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You look take away. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm seeing Dr. Zina over there. Can we tell her we love her? Praise the Lord. Amen. Just help me tell her you love her. Please. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You know, Zina, Zina, please stand up. Let them know you. Some people don't know you. Come on. Stand up. Let's love on you. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I think she never expected it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of us know victory now? Victory, come on. Stand up. Bless love on you some more. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. What do we say to her? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So God began to tell us that one way we can fix our self-esteem is by the knowledge of God. Amen. He said, they that know their God, they shall be what? Strong. And they shall what? And we took a teaching on that. And then last week we took a teaching on raising our self-esteem by faith. Praise the Lord. So don't want to go further. That's why I said well, we'll, we'll, we'll try to conclude it hopefully today or maybe our next teaching. I think we we'll still have one more Sunday for this month. Praise the Lord. I want to teach on ultimate self-esteem boosters. Praise the Lord. Ultimate what? Hallelujah. Ultimate self-esteem boosters. Amen. How to finally, finally raise my self-esteem. Praise the Lord. Tell anybody, finally, finally raise my self-esteem. Praise the Lord. A student who is prepared for an exam, a very sharp and intelligent guy, can still fail that exam if he has a low self-esteem and if he's afraid. And that's why sometimes you see some people say, like, I knew the answer, but, but I knew the answer. I knew, I knew the answer, but, but praise the Lord. Intelligence is not enough. And self-esteem is the ultimate. And those who have it, they control the world. Praise the Lord. And that's why God is setting us up for something power, 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 powerful. Praise Master Jesus. So last week we talked on faith, but I want to say that faith is so crucial and faith is so important and powerful, but faith is not enough. Tell anybody faith is not enough. How many of you have been in situations where you were sure you had faith, but... Something just still didn't work. How many have been there? Praise the Lord. I think I've been there. Praise the Lord. Amen. You were sure you had faith. It was not in doubt, but for some reason, things just didn't work. So today we want to address it, we want to fix it, we want to learn what are the extra things I can add to my life besides faith to shape my life up. Second Peter, the first chapter. Second Peter from verse 1. Second Peter 1 from verse 1. Hallelujah. Second Peter, the first chapter from the first verse. Amen, amen. amen. The scripture goes, it says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, when I read scriptures and when I'm studying scriptures, there is a way I'm, I study it. I'm not reading it just like um, a letter. I'm reading it like a coded message. I'm reading it like I'm looking for something. Tell anyone I'm looking for something. I'm searching out for truths. Praise the Lord. Because now it's easy to read this scripture and then just jump past it, like an intro or like what you call a preface or, or something, just, just pass it. But here, hearing already, the truth is already being spilled. 
to anybody who's been spilled. Now, he says, this letter I'm writing is not to just any and everybody. I am writing it to those who have obtained like precious faith. People who have the same kind, the same kind of faith like I have. So, the, the statement he's going to make afterwards become very important because, remember what I'm saying, faith is not always enough. He's writing to people who have faith. It's not people who don't have faith. He says, here is Peter, the servant of the Most High God. I am writing to those who are of like faith as I am. And so, you may be sitting close to a brother or to a sister who has just faith like you. And both of you said you had faith, and it's true, but there there might have been something the person has that you do not have. And that may be why the person has a different testimony from you. And we're going to learn from me today. To fix our self-esteem. Praise the Lord. He said, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, colon. Next verse, please. He says, grace and peace be multiplied. Hallelujah. How do I boost my faith? Besides, how do I boost my self-esteem? How do I raise my, my self-worth, my value? How do I increase in value besides the knowledge of God? Besides faith? Firstly, I need more grace in my life. Hallelujah. Number one, grace. Hallelujah. Number one, what? Grace. You need more grace. Hallelujah. 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 You need more what? Woo! That's a powerful word. I think I'll take it as a pair. Grace and peace. Just put it together. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Grace and what? How many of you have, you know, I'm singing mostly primarily to students. You've, you've, you're going for an exam, you know, um, you studied, you prepared, but for some reason you're still shaking. Before you pick the answer, you're already shaking. Your teacher has not even started asking. You're already shaking. You're already shaking. You don't have peace inside. Amen. Tell me what. You need peace inside. You need calmness. You need calmness. You need what? And, and you know, some of you, sometimes you stay here and some of you have done it with you. I can look at you and virtually tell that something is, not, is, is going on with you. I can look at you and somebody suddenly tell that, you know, you're not fine. Now, if you think that we can do that in church, you think your teacher can't do it in class? He can look at you as you're walking into class and know she's not prepared. Amen. <laughs> and no, she's prepared, but she's scared. And that's why some of you, your teachers will try to calm you down, like, calm down. I know you know it. Praise the Lord. That's already grace speaking. Praise the Lord. Because some other teachers will walk you out or put you bad marks. Tell anybody, I need grace. I need grace. Grace, when you, when you have grace in sufficiency, and when you have peace, when you are at peace, you seem to be in control. You're unpredictable for your teacher. Can I preach to students today? Amen. Amen. The man of God is saying, grace, although you have faith, I believe I'll pass the exam, but I'm shaking. Um, next. No, you go next. <laughs> Amen. You know, teacher, you go post peace school, you, you go by the list. Teacher, start from bottom. Start from the from the bottom. You, you you are afraid, but when you have grace, you are in control. Am I talking to somebody? And you have to realize the man of God is saying, "Let grace and peace not just be with you. Let it be multiplied. Tell anybody, multiply grace. Say multiply peace. This is why some people are so confident." It's as if there is, a, there is a force behind them. You are wondering, what is going on? What, what do you have? How many of you, have you seen cases where you went for an exam and you didn't, you didn't need to say much? The teacher is like, oh, I know you. I know you. You're a good boy. You know, just like a good boy. Praise the Lord. I mean, you don't know anything that day. You didn't read. May grace speak for you. You know that moment you come out from an exam and you just say, it's grace, so it's just grace. I don't know how it happened. May it happen for you on a consistent basis. Can I say this now that it is not just about your classes, but even in life. That's why the man of God is saying, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Hallelujah. 
When others are, are afraid and scared and, and don't know what to happen next, and then, you know, everybody's scared, you know, what to happen? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You're calm. Why? You got grace. Hallelujah. Grace and peace multiplied unto me. So me grace and peace is multiplied to me. 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 Hallelujah. Now, if I have a problem in my life, if I have a need, if I have an issue going on in my life, I just have to think exactly the same way. I'm, I'm talking about self-esteem and self-worth. When you feel like, okay, I may not be qualified like everybody else. I've not done well enough. My life has issues and I have messes in my life. But then there is the grace and then there is the peace that speaks for me. Am I talking to somebody? This alone will raise your esteem. Because there are somebody who is... Um, who is not so qualified and who has no knowledge of grace and who has no experience of peace, whereas he will recoil. You just show up. Not because I deserve it, but because he's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because God is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell anybody I deserve the best things in life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say it's not over for me. Amen. Amen. Say my mistakes cannot ruin me. Hallelujah. Grace and peace. And he says, how does it get to be multiplied? He said, through the knowledge of God. You see what we began to speak about? The more I know God, the more grace I have. Amen. And that's why you miss it, if a lot of folks miss it, when they don't want to take time to know God. They that know their God, they shall be strong. How are they going to be strong? They will come to terms with the fact that there is grace for them. There is grace for them. Tell anybody, there is grace for me. Hallelujah. One wonderful, one wonderful day like that. David had just made some crazy mistakes. He just finished um, sleeping with a woman. He just finished um, getting her pregnant. He just finished killing her husband. He just finished lying. And the prophet just appeared to give him verdict. I say, see what you are doing, you evil man. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Grace spoke for him. The man of God says, blessed is that person for whom God will not count his sins against him. He ran to God and uttered prayers. Some of you and some people, this is where you make the mistake. When you, when, when you, you see, your mistake is not the mistake. Your mistake is the mistake you make after you make the mistake. Am I talking to somebody? The problem is many times, some of you, when you go wrong, you, don't, you run to the wrong persons or people. Not with David. When David would go here, why I would run towards God. He would just come to God, God fix me, I'm messed up. Some of you, if you make mistakes, we won't see you in church. For weeks. And yet, this is the message to deliver you. Hallelujah. Tell him I'm running towards God. I'm not running away from God. Say, I am not Cain. Amen. Say, I am not Adam and Eve. Say, I'm running towards God. Not away from God. He alone can deliver me. So grace becomes your consciousness. You realize there is somebody who is speaking for my good. There's someone who is there for me. There is someone who loves me. There is someone who is, who is in my favor. That's what grace is, unmerited favor. And as you experience more of that favor, God begins to shape in your life. Tell anybody, my life is taking a new look. Amen. Say, are you ready for what is coming? Hallelujah. There are some of you who made mistakes when you were in first year, second year. Amen. Third year. Hallelujah. Tap your neighbor, tap your neighbor properly as if you are the one. Tap your neighbor properly as if you are the one. Even if you have not made mistake yet, or if you are first or second year, tap properly. You may need this grace I'm about to release now. Tap your neighbor as if you are the one. Say the glory of the latter house shall be way more than that of the former. Hallelujah. God is so gonna beautify your life. Huh? 
the mistakes of the past will be swallowed up. Amen. Hallelujah. God is not how to which, which haunting you. He's how to beautify your life. He's the master craftsman. He's out to give you the best things of life. Am I talking to somebody? This is already affecting my self-esteem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Number three, please. Number three because of time. He said, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Amen. Number two. Boost our faith. Is a knowledge of what God has given unto you. You have to know what God has given to you. Hello? My God. Amen. If you don't know what you have, you're going to live based on what you think you have. Hello? Hello? You know, some of you, how many of you has it happened to? Praise the Lord. You know, there were moments when you didn't have money. You didn't have money. In your mind, you didn't have money. Praise the Lord. Not knowing your parents have put money in your bank account since, but they just forgot to send a text message. Am I talking to somebody? And there you were managing, still suffering, not knowing there was grace. Hallelujah. How many of you it has happened to sometimes, you know, you're looking for clothes to wear, to a meeting, to a service, to an event. I mean, there was one you hid somewhere, one time, in a long time, you have not used and you have not touched. Am I talking to somebody? And so there you were managing the one you had, but then there was somewhere, someone else says, Amen. There are things which God has given to you. Can I announce to you what God has given unto you? The Bible says he has given unto us all things. Tell me about all things. That pertains to life. So, 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 so there's nothing you are ever going to need that God has not made provision for. Tell me God has made provisions for me. Say so he has given unto me all things that pertains to this life and that pertains to godliness. That's how you raise your self-esteem. When you know what you've got. It will even affect your prayer. This is why as a child of God, you know God has given you this. You don't come begging. You come talking. As I, was, I was praying against um, me, uh, <coughs> slavery mentality on Friday. About the, 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 the elder one of the prodigal, of, 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 I mean, to the prodigal son. Who, everything in the house was his. But he never knew it was his own. For the brother had taken his own portion. So what was in his house was now his own. But there he was crying to daddy. The Bible says he refused to go into the house. Daddy, please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Me, me, me. I've been a good boy in this house. I've, I've not caused you problem. I, I, I didn't go anywhere. I've been serving you. And, 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 and yet since you didn't even keep chicken for me. This one that sw- take, took all your money. Yeah, you look at him now. You're you are giving him this. Daddy, please, please, please. Today, this one won't work. And the Bible says, the father looked at him. What? I've been raising a son. And my son has made so much friendship with the slaves and the servants. He now thinks like the slaves and the servants. All this while. You know, that kind of, ah. Tell anybody, it matters who you hang around. If you hang around servants too much, you think you're a servant. All the while, what he didn't know was that the things in the house was his. He thought it was the father's. Why? Because, they, I mean, there was the, he didn't hang around the father more. He was in the house, but was not hanging around the father. The father said, all that I have are thine. Because your younger brother took his own already. <coughs> you need to know what is yours. Tell anybody, I need to know. Say, we need to know what is ours. Say, God is saying that he has given unto us, that he has given unto me all that pertains to life and godliness. You see why it will not be difficult for you to believe? There's nothing in this life now that you do not deserve. Am I talking to somebody in this church? Amen. Amen. Tap your neighbor say, I'm coming back stronger. I'm coming back bigger. I'm coming back loaded. Amen. All that pertains to life. Every good thing. Every good thing that pertains to life. Amen. 
Hallelujah. 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 Woo! No wonder the psalmist says, the Lord shall supply all. Amen. All my needs. Hallelujah. Yeah. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. I shall not what? I shall not what? I don't lack. Tell anybody I don't lack. Say I don't lack. Amen. Say all things are mine. All things are mine. Everything I have need for, they are on their way coming to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Say I attract good things to myself. Because they are mine. God has made provisions for me. That's how we think. Tap your neighbor. Say that's how I think. Say I don't have a lack mentality. I have an excess mentality. I have a sufficiency mentality. Amen. Hallelujah. Tap your neighbor. Say now good things they rush me. Amen. Say now good things they rush me. Ah. All things. All things means all. Hallelujah. Tell anybody some cars are rushing me. Say some houses are rushing me. Say some monies are rushing me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. That's how we think. And what you think is what you become. You know, some of you, you are trying to, you wait for the time where you feel different. To think different. For as he thinks, so is he. Hallelujah. 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 Again, he's emphasizing, he said, through the knowledge of him. How do I come to this thing? That's why we say, open the word for yourself. Amen. Amen. Tell anybody I know who I am. I Tell anybody I know who I am. I know if someone walked into my life and walked into my room and came to me and said, Toss here the law. Your days are numbered. Oh, why is it? Eh? It has happened before. <laughs> Amen. Your days are numbered. Let me leave it there. <laughs> it's happened before. Anyway, some of you now will think, okay, because I dramatized it, you know, using a man of God and everything. It's exactly the same way a doctor can look at you and tell you the same. The prophets in the hospital. Who go on prophesying and telling people you can't have a baby? Oh. Ah, I forgot we have doctors here, but I have to say it as it is. Who go on and looks at people and tell you, say things like, you know, you have just five days to live. They said that to Lester Sumra, they said that to David Yongichu, they said that to Kenneth Hagen. These men lived to be 86 at least, all of them. Amen. Tell anybody I'm not planning to die now. Because God has given me. All things that pertains to life and godliness. I'm not going to somebody. Someone looks at you and tells you, you, you will suffer. You start crying. Man of God, he placed a curse on my life. Please anoint me. Break the curse. Break the curse. Please put more. Put more. Put more. Because you don't know who you are. Hallelujah. Tell anybody I know who I am. <laughs> <laughs>